I have two different scalpel handles in front of me right now with two different blades. Now, the reason for making this video was just to bring to your attention that we don't necessarily have to use the standard number three scan scalpel handle. Now, there are other options out there, and I wasn't aware of that when I got through my training, so I was using this, getting along okay, but it just never really felt natural to me. So what I did was I searched out some other options, and what I found was the number five handle, which is here, and it's kind of rounded like a pen. So there's all different types of these. You can get all different rounded ones. The five isn't the only one that's rounded. The different weighting of them and different shapes, and you'll find one that will feel good in your hands. This here is basically like holding a pen, and what you can do with it is you can roll it around. So I mean, you have complete control over this scalpel blade in many different planes. Now, the reason I like this is because if we're gonna be incising, most times when we're releasing a flap, we're cutting around teeth. So we're trying to trace the gingiva of a tooth. Now, doing that with this is way easier than using this clunky kind of popsicle stick shaped scalpel. So, I mean, you're trying to roll this and kind of carve around the teeth. It's just not as natural or as easy as that rounded handle. So for that reason, I'd suggest that you try this out. The number three, of course, is probably the most recognized, most used scalpel. It does have these numbers on it, which is kind of nice if you're doing biopsies or things and you want to get a measurement, which we don't have on this round one here. But great tool to try. I suggest you give it a shot. As far as the blades go, we've got a 15 blade on this number five and we've got a 12 blade here. The 15 blade has universal applications. It's kind of the main blade that you'll hear about in dentistry. When you're using this, basically what you want to be doing is you want to be about 35 degrees to the bone surface that you're cutting. So you don't want to be straight up and down. You don't want to be right flat. You want to be about 35 degrees. So when we're doing that, we want to be pushing and you want to be trying to almost cut bone. So you're not even trying to cut tissue, try to cut to the bone. Make sure you're making a full thickness flap as you're pulling the scalpel along. You want to press very, very firmly. If you don't, what's going to happen is you're going to cut and you're going to end up with a partial thickness flap because you're not going to get through that periosteum all the way to the bone. The next thing to note would be that when you're making an incision, so say with your distal incision on a third molar, you are going to cut from back on that distal buckle all the way to here and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to flip this over and give one more pass just slightly into that incision down at the bone again that's going to help to release that incision and finish it off so when you're cutting you can see what happens you have this kind of this contoured rounded edge as you get close to where you're cutting try to zoom in you can see that little space there that is an incomplete incision and it's very tough to get all the way there so by turning this around, now we can finish that off. Okay, so that's a little tip about releasing your flaps, getting a complete incision. You don't want to go and cut like this, so just ignore where I'm cutting. But if you're cutting on the bone, you don't want to do this kind of a thing. You don't want to be cutting like this, like you're tracing a line. You want to make one firm, deliberate motion so that you're not making hamburger out of that tissue. So if you keep tracing over your incision, even though you think you're on the same line, you're really not, and you're kind of chopping up that incision line. It's not gonna heal as cleanly, a little more trauma to the patient. These things will dull very, very quickly. So make sure that if you're doing, say, again, a case of third molars or something down the road, and even if you're just doing a few extractions at one time and you're, and you're doing a couple different flaps, Try to make sure that you're using a fresh scalpel blade. Don't skimp on these because even just a few passes over the bone, these things are tremendously more blunt. So if we're taking out third molars, if I take out two on one side, I'll switch to a new blade for the other side. I'll just use two per patient because typically by the third flap, you're, you're basically just pushing through the tissue and cutting it with pressure versus actually slicing it cleanly. Now, if we move back to the blades here, the number 12 blade will finish these up. 12 is great for upper, say, third molar incisions and gain. So you can reach in behind the tuberosity very easily because of this curve. We can get right up in behind the teeth to make that distal releasing incision up behind that upper third molar that's maybe still impacted under that tissue. Now you have to be very aware with the 12 because it also comes as a 12B blade. 
Now the 12B has a cutting edge all the way up this convex surface. And if you're using that in patients, you're going to be at risk to cutting their cheek or incising their cheek while you're trying to make your flap with the opposite side of that blade. So the 12 is the one to get, not the 12B. The other most commonly used blade in dentistry would be the number 11 blade. We don't actually carry them in our office because we typically will just use one of these, but they're great for stab incisions, so basically poking or puncturing. And the reason for that would be an incision in drainage. If you have a big fluctuant abscess around a tooth and you've removed the tooth and you need to establish some drainage, you'd make that stab incision and you're gonna then kind of dissect things out with your hemostat. Now, that is a great tool for that. It has a different shape, kind of like the 15, but basically flat on the bottom and kind of straight across the top, just like this. But instead of curved, it, it goes flat to a point. Now, that's, again, great for stabbing those areas, something you won't use commonly. And so for that reason, you can probably use a 15 or a 12. It'll work just the same.